Uh, hey guys, my name is Dustin Waite. I'm a, a professional artist in Central Florida, and I'm going to be talking about composition theory and how to set up a successful painting. So, uh, first thing you're going to have to set up is the fifth line. This is before you even get into your uh, your thumbnail sketch. So, with the fifth line is, you know how basic painting has four edges, and this isn't a canvas. This is a piece of paper, so it's really flimsy. But this is, you know, side one, side two, side three, side four. And that can be seen in like this right here. This is the first side, second side, third side, fourth side. The edges, basically, right? And so the fifth line is a line that comes from the four edges. It comes from about right here. And it goes kind of like that. And it can be anything you want. What it does is it establishes the foreground for the painting. The painting has three parts. It has a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. So most of the time, the foreground is some sort of hill or anything like that, which just establishes a sense of depth by adding the fifth line there. Also, it can bring the, use, the viewer up, use, adding movement. You can come up this line and say your main part of the composition is right here. What this line does is it helps to bring the viewer's eye up the line straight to the main part of your composition, which is the important part. Okay? Second thing you can do is you can even add a sixth line, which you don't have to. But it's a line that comes like here, and it comes out, and it comes back up. And this line also directs the viewer's eye towards the main part of the composition. So that is the fifth and the sixth line. Alright guys, so now that we have our uh, fifth and sixth line established, we're going to start a whole new thing. It's called a thumbnail. A thumbnail is basically just a miniature of your painting. So it's, your, it's like a map, basically. You try to find the way you want things to look and so once you start painting it's not so confusing so what you gotta first think about when you're doing a thumbnail is what size are you painting are you painting 16 by 20 11 by 14 5 by 5 is it a square is it a rectangle you know anything like that so the painting I'm going to be setting up is a 16 by 20 so 16 by 20 it's pretty simple it's going to be a 4 by 5 setup because you just want to shrink it down so you know it's going to be you can choose either landscape view, which is horizontal, or um, portrait view, which is up and down. Now, people don't think that you can use a portrait view for a landscape, but you can. And right now, we're going to be setting up a landscape. But I'm going to go landscape view. So you have your basic line. Right? And it's really sloppy. This is just my basic outline. And this isn't to scale. Yours should be to scale, but this is just for teaching purposes. Okay? So I'm using a Sharpie, but you should be using a pencil. Now what you're going to want to do is you want to think, okay, so I want to add that fifth line that we just talked about. So what am I going to do to add that fifth line? So usually what I like to do is I just like, you know, just kind of add it in. And just see what happens. So right now we have that fifth line here. And you're like, okay, cool. Now maybe I could put a tree there later on. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to put mountains in the background because I wanted to do... A painting that has mountains in it. Okay, so now I have my mountains in the background. I have that. I'm gonna have this mountain come down over this, like this, or and then maybe add another mountain even right here. And then what I'm gonna want is I'm gonna have a river coming down here, and it's gonna come down into this lake, and it's gonna come over this way off the composition. So that means I have this spot. To establish a middle ground, because we have our background, which is the mountains, and we have our foreground, which is going to be this little hill with little leaves, and there's going to be a tree coming out of it like that, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to add another plot of land back here, and it's going to be smaller than the first one, and it's going to come in here and just add some depth to the overall composition. So now we have our background, our middle ground, which is going to be this little part here, and our foreground and that's a thumbnail okay this is the basic skeletal outline of the thumbnail now what you're going to want to do is with colored pencils you don't have to do this this is just an extra step you're going to want to color it in so you get the colors down that you want also another thing you want to keep in mind is there's something called trompe l'oeil which means to fool the eye and what that means is if you're using perspective things get smaller as they go farther away they also get blurrier and the colors are not so bright so say if I took a neon balloon it's neon green right and I've held it right in your front of your face you could tell that's definitely a neon color 
but if I moved it way across, you could just tell it's kind of like a grayish green color. So that's what you're going to want to do. So your mountains, you're not gonna, you're not going to have super bright mountains or super bright water back there. But once it comes up to this front, then it's going to be super bright and super detailed. Things get less detailed as they go farther back, and uh, the closer they are, the more detail that they have. Another thing is called chiaroscuro, which means dark values next to light values and warm colors next to cool colors. So what that means is uh, you have your, all your warm colors, which are yellow, reds, oranges, stuff that you think is like the sun, like hot, hot, hot. And you have your cool colors, which is blue, purple, white, all those sorts of like ice colors. I think of them as ice, what colors you see ice, and what colors you see warm. So the reason people like sunsets so much is because it is all, it's all it is is warm colors and cool colors. Because the sun is warm and the oceans and the skies are cool and they come together and make a really nice composition. So that's what you're going to do here. So say this is going to be my cool color. This is going to be a nice light white color. It's going to be a, Russian river, or a nice blue color. It's going to be a nice river coming through here. So I'm going to want to put you know some nice reds in this hill so it really can contrast. I mean it's going to be mostly green because it's going to be grass but I put some reds in there and mix it in. It'll look really good when you're done. Alright so that's setting up a thumbnail. So again, guys, I'm uh, Dustin Waite from waitpaintlessons.blogspot.com. If you go to that website, there'll be a complete lesson going over more of skeletal drawings and mass gesturing and how to take your thumbnail and apply it to a canvas and make your painting look really great. So again, that's waitpaintlessons.blogspot.com. Thank you.